Hey, welcome back to Tuesday Afternoon. Hi everybody, it's Tuesday and welcome back. And today we're going to be sculpting Dog Day. But this is a rather unique sculpture because we're going to be making it in two parts. One to be accurate to the game and then the other half to save him. What Dog Day look like with the diorama or just a little display scene. I think it looks pretty cool and I hope you make this too. Step one, we're going to make the head first. Just take some aluminum foil, make it into a ball shape with a flat side and then we're going to cover that with the original sculpty polymer clay this area of extra clay on the front of the face is just so you are able to make the eyes i do go more in depth on this process in the cat nap video if you feel like this is going a little fast then i would recommend watching that video for this section Here I'm going to be adding the nose and then I'm going to move on to adding a little bit of texture to the face. I'm going to use a needle tool and I'm actually on the next part going to use a needle because I want to make some finer lines. I really like how this turned out and next we're going to make the ear. Just roll out some polymer clay, cut the shape of the ear out and then you can use the ear and trace the other ear out. Next you'll be wanting to smooth the edges and then apply it to the head, kind of getting the shape you want the ear to lay. Then I'm going to take another tool and smooth it into place. But first I'm going to add a little bit of texture. There you go. Looks good in the bottom of the head. So don't forget to add that. That's where his neck is going to be. Next we're going to make the torso and this is where the two parts come in. Pay careful attention to what I do here because this is probably one of the most important parts to make sure that this sculpture ends up being two parts. That's where the neck is going to be, and this is where it fits in to the locking mechanism. Next, I am just going to make the outline of the zipper, and this is a very deep crevice because I'm going to push material down into it so it has a very nice finish. I am also going to make the zipper pattern. You can actually draw that in or you can just take the imprint of an actual zipper. Here I am making the part that fits over and it's actually the waistline of his legs. And then we are next going to make the holes where the legs go. You can do this part in several different ways, but I've decided to do it this way. I just want something to lock into place, keep the legs on and make sure it doesn't move. Do remember that after you bake that the hole will get smaller. So I recommend making the part that fits into the body a little bit smaller than the actual hole. So when it shrinks, it fits in nicely. Well, I'm just putting very small amount of details in because I do want it to look like labs. You can see here that I have already baked the head and now I am working on the legs. You want to cover the wire in aluminum foil. Make sure to leave enough wire that goes up into the part that fits onto the waist and enough where you can put the foot on or the paw on. Here I'm just smoothing it out. It might be easier for you to actually put the waist part in the oven as long also the torso because it's easier to kind of smooth it into place and then you will need to bake that after. Here I'm making the paws very easy, very simple. I just base the appearance off of cat nap. I think that they probably all kind of look very similar in style, little differences but pretty similar. This is looking really good and we're going on to the next step where we're going to need to put this back in the oven. When using the oven, I would recommend covering a pan in aluminum foil and then putting parchment paper over that. We're just going to protect the pan, but also the parchment paper will protect your sculpture from the aluminum foil and it rubbing off onto the surface. Cutting out some steps is great. 
Here I've taken it out of the oven and we're gonna move on to the wiring step here, even if you think you don't need it. I would recommend pushing the wire into the arm the length that you think it needs to be inside the arm to secure it and then stretch it out to the length you think the arm would be and then cut it like that. Here, after I have assessed the length, I'm gonna go ahead and glue it in and glue the hands on and then I'm gonna cover that in stuffing. You can find this at Walmart or Hobby Stores in the sewing section or material section. Looking very good. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some cotton fabric to this. Now, you can use an old t-shirt. I do this step often and if you need further clarification you can look at some of my past videos and I show a more in-depth approach to this. Here I'm just making the arms bell out towards the hands and I'm going to sew it all the way up. One thing I would recommend with this since we do have a lot of texture on the body with the hair you're going to want to add some glue so you still have flexibility but it also looks like hair. Here you can see that I am pushing the fabric into those crevices we made earlier kind of to make a t-shirt effect. You're also going to need to make an added piece of polymer clay that's a zipper. The zipper that extends down and hangs down. If you remember like some of the scenes with Dog Day, his zipper extends and hangs down. Very thin piece, do it for the lowest amount of time and it's very flexible and you can glue it into place with hot glue and cut off any of the extra. I am using Sobo glue for putting on the material because it doesn't yellow and it is archival. It is made specifically for this kind of crafting or art making. Here I'm gonna do the same thing with the neck that we did with the arms just so we have flexibility with the neck. And I think this is gonna look really great. Okay, the next step after all this is the paintwork. And you might think, hey, you haven't made the buckles and the belts and the, all this other extra stuff. And we're not gonna make those until later. We want basically the sculpture to be finished because we want those to fit exactly onto the sculpture. And we couldn't do that at an earlier date. Timing is always important when you're sculpting. And I wanted to also add, that one of the most important things for you to have when you are making sculptures like this is wire cutters. Don't ever use scissors to cut wire. A, you're going to ruin your scissors and B, you could really hurt yourself. So just make sure you have wire cutters. I think that's like one of the most important things. If you saw me painting right there, what I was doing was painting material and that will be like the strap that holds the belt into place. Most of the belts are going to be made out of polymer clay and then the little fine detail I'm going to use a cloth to make the strap. Here I'm just making sure I have the correct length and once I put it in the oven and bake it I can paint it and look how nice that is. I'm using extra light sculpty and that's why it is so pliable. I recommend it for anything that you need to have that will bend around a surface such as a belt or even like a movable arm. Hands won't work with that, but it will work with arms. Original sculpty like we made the rest of the figure out of. And the prong is also just a very thin piece of polymer clay that I baked and I just cut it to the size I need. Place with super glue, not hot glue, it's too visible of area, too small. And what you do after it's all glued together, you're gonna come back in and paint it and no one's gonna be able to tell. Next, we're gonna be adding the black belts on and I used muslin and I painted it black. You can paint both sides if you want, but the other side isn't gonna be visible. So if you wanna do that, it's fine, but if you don't, that's okay too. I went ahead and did cloth here because it's a very bendable area and it just wouldn't work with clay there. So we're just gonna do that with cloth and then next we're gonna move on to the zipper. Very easy to do. It creates this nice effect to bake it in the oven and it's pretty much done at this point. All you have to do is the finishing touches and now you have an accurate 
sculpture to the game, but also you saved Dog Day. You rescued him. You can go ahead and make that out of polymer clay, or you could even make that out of a piece of cardboard. It's really up to you. The diorama I made out of cardboard, I cut out cardboard squares, and then I glued them into place and painted them. Did a little bit of antiquing. You can always add a finish to the tiles. I would also recommend adding a finish to the hands and the paws. That's all. I think it looks great. I hope you like it too. If you want to see anything else, let me know. I hope you have a wonderful day, my friends. Bye!